Hi everyone, it's Catherine Leyland from the LPDS English team and I'm here today to give you some help and support on how you can make spelling stick in your classroom. So I'm just going to share hopefully a few useful nuggets with you that you might be able to apply back at school. The S to help make spelling stick is to think about keeping spelling simple and to think about the strategies that you are using. Do remember that when you're giving children spellings to learn, the less you give a child to remember, the more chance there is of them remembering it. We know that ourselves, don't we? So don't be tempted to overwhelm them. Think about the number of quality spellings that you want them to learn and try to keep it simple. Make sure that you've had a look at the spelling column from your key learning in writing and just have a little look. So this is an example of a year five one. There are 15 spelling elements and that's to be covered by the end of the year. So we don't need to panic and we don't need to try to rush through these. We need to make sure that we're learning them in a, the most simple and effective way. OK, the other bit that obviously not to forget is our statutory word list. So, again, this is the statutory word list from year five and year six. And what I've done is highlight some of those words in red. Now, I was thinking about how I might link my spelling learning to my unit. And the unit that I've chosen to exemplify is the beautiful year five unit, the lion, the witch in the wardrobe. The words in red are the spellings that occur within that quality text. There are 24 of them. Now, we could be spending up to four weeks on that text. So, again, five or six a week would be great, wouldn't it? So if we just make sure we're keeping it simple, keeping it relevant and choosing the correct number of spellings so that our children don't become overwhelmed. This could be a suggested structure over three weeks for your spelling focuses, again, based on that unit, the line, the witch and the wardrobe. So for week one, for example, I might choose a spelling objective that's linked to the current unit. So just one. So I might jump on the one that says to recognize and spell words containing the letter string O-U-G-H. So I might give the children five or six words to investigate and to learn there. Week two, I might choose a handful of those statutory words that were highlighted in red, but also any interesting spotter words from the current text, any that we jump on as we're reading through. Week three, we might go back to the spelling objectives and I might choose a different one. For example, recognise and spell words ending in A-B-L-E and I-B-L-E. But also I might add some personal spellings to make sure that the children are getting some individual spellings. So perhaps words that the children are spelling consistently wrong. OK, so that might be a suggested structure over those three weeks. But again, making sure we're keeping it simple. In terms of the strategies that you use, if these are consistent across the school, that will also help with the children's confidence, because as they move up the year groups, they will be familiar with many of these strategies already. In terms of making that spelling stick, again, make sure the strategies are simple, make sure they're effective, make sure that they're used multiple times and make sure that the children find them meaningful. So we've got some examples here. So we've got a trace and replicate activity there on the far left. We've got a pyramid spelling, which is it, the children overlearning the spelling. That one can be really effective. There are some spelling um, cards on our website, which you might find useful. You could have packs of those on the table to help children with their spellings. You might want to buy one of these lovely spelling and rhyming dictionaries, which actually links spelling to um, poetry and gives you lots of ideas on how you can use poems to integrate with spelling to help make that spelling stick which we think would be amazing and of course you can make it as multi-sensory as possible so if you can have songs that will help those spellings stick or if you can get some glow sticks to write those words in the air and make it really multi-sensory then that would make it again more fun and more memorable so it's three m's when we think of our strategies to help make that spelling stick we want the children to experience that spelling multiple times it's got to be meaningful to the children and we want to make it memorable so do think about the strategies that you are using within your school the t for help make spelling stick is to make sure that spelling is taught and to make sure that the skills are transferable 
don't take your eye off the ball with spelling. Make sure it is given a priority and given the time that it deserves. Reflect, ask yourself the following questions. How is spelling currently taught in your school or your class? Are you using a specific program or a scheme? How often is spelling taught and for how long? And is this effective? What are the current issues in spelling for your class? So when you're marking children's independent work, are you doing some sort of error analysis and making notes of those words that children are commonly misspelling? And are you building into the, this into your future planning? Spelling needs to be taught and not caught. It needs to be taught explicitly. And as I've just said, it's actually three M's, multiple, meaningful and memorable. A little and often works better than one hour's lesson every week. So if you can do 10 to 15 minutes, two, three times a week, more if you can do it daily, even better. But drip feeding it in every day is very, very effective. Focus most time on the high value aspects for your year group. So suffixes, prefixes, homophones, those statutory word lists. And have a little think about where the spelling work's going to be recorded. Are spelling journals something that you might consider back at school? Remember also the importance of our proofreading and editing for spelling. That doesn't happen by accident, does it? And we know that can be a big issue with children's independent writing. So do make sure that you are building in time to talk, to teach and practice proofreading and editing for spelling. And this might be an idea that you might use. So this is one strategy where the children can have a go at their own spellings. So this might just be in the back of the children's workbooks, the page might be folded in half, one column for the children, one column for the teacher. And as the child is doing an independent write, when it gets to the point when they come across a spelling they're not sure of, they can just turn to the back and have a couple of goes in the back, just one, two or three goes, not too many so it doesn't disrupt the flow of their spelling. Have a little go. And then obviously when you come to market, you can see the attempts that the children have made. If it it's incorrect, it gives you the opportunity to provide the children with the correct spelling. And if it is correct, you can tick it or give it a smiley face or whatever you choose. But that will really help the children obviously to experiment with those spelling patterns. You could use those in a cross curricular way because obviously vocabulary is not something that we are just coming across in English, is it? It's across every subject. So you can see I've popped a word at the bottom there, solution, which perhaps the children have met during a science lesson. So making sure that those spelling strategies are being used across the curriculum. The I in making spelling stick is for investigate. Again, making it interesting and meaningful to pupils. If the pupils are investigating and looking at the meanings of words and root words, it can make it re really sticky for children. So you can see here, I've got some root words on the left. We've got the meanings of them and then we could ask children obviously to investigate words that contain those roots. So the root bio, for example, the children might give us um, the examples of biographies and biology. And again, once the children know if they can match up that that root word means life, it just helps to make that sticky learning, doesn't it? Really makes bring that spell into life and make it quite concrete. Other things you can do to investigate spellings, give the children a deeper meaning and understanding of the word. Use morphology and etymology. You might want to buy one of these lovely um, etymological dictionaries. So I just chose one example, uh, which was the word rhyme, and I'll have a little look where that came from. Originally, it came from Ruthmos, which is a Greek word meaning to flow. And I thought that was quite nice because things that rhyme and have rhythm tend to flow. A bit later on then, that changed um, and became rhythmus in Latin. And at that time, it was applied to rhyming poems. So again, you can see that the trail there, can't you, of how the origin of the words and how it then became rhyme in English um, and how that does make it really, really meaningful. And then again, obviously, get the children to investigate, not just spellings, but obviously in this tricky language, um, the different spellings that can be and sounds that can be produced by the, the same spelling pattern. So this one, for example, recognize and spell words containing the letter string O-U-G-H, a really good one to investigate there, because obviously we have got lots of different words which sound very different, even though that letter string is spelled the same. So make it fun and get the children to investigate those words. That will really help the spelling to stick.
The C from our stick is to make sure that the children are you meeting these words in context and to make spelling as concrete as possible. Abstract concepts are really difficult for children to understand. So where possible, we do need to make our spellings as concrete as possible. And again, to help make them concrete, we can meet our spellings in context, and this will give our children a great, greater understanding. Now, this is just an example of how you might cover the spelling rules through your English unit. Now, I am not suggesting for one minute that you cover every single spelling rule with one unit. But just, this is just to show that you could, but you might choose a couple, two, maybe three of those spelling rules from your year group to concentrate on throughout your unit. So you can see there I've got examples of each of those spelling rules. And I've found um, some examples of where the children can meet those in context. Again, once we've met them in context, we just we need to make sure that the children understand the vocabulary. We might need to clarify any unfamiliar vocabulary with the children, doing looking at definitions, for example, to help the children. Then once they've got that understanding of the word, that will also help them to be able to spell it. OK, so here's just a nice example. Um, it's just a page from The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe and a couple of things that I thought we might need to clarify. Sometimes clarification might need a visual, especially if it's something that's quite far removed from the children's own life experiences. So in here there was a suit of armour. So we could look at the spelling of that. We can look at the definition of it, but actually a visual might really help with that. We've also got a half, and I thought a visual might help with that one. And then further on in that chapter, there are mothballs. Um, and I'm pretty sure lots of our children today won't have any experience of mothballs and also a fawn. So sometimes in terms of that clarification for understanding and for spelling, do provide the children with some visuals to make it concrete for the children. And the final one, the K of our stick is knowledge making sure that both you and the children have got the sufficient knowledge for the year group expectations. So again, go back to that key learning, have a look at that third column, see exactly what is expected for that year group, those end of year expectations. Have a look at those statutory word lists and see how you can cover those throughout the course of the year. But not only focusing on your current year group, but also reflecting on what should have gone before. Remember, we will need to reinforce those spellings previously taught. So while we might be focusing on our year five content, do go back and see what, which spelling rules that were covered in lower key stage two and ensure that you are reinforcing those as well where appropriate. OK, so just to summarise then, to help make spelling stick, in our classrooms, we want to make sure that our spelling is kept simple and that we use consistent strategies. We want to make sure we are explicitly teaching spelling and making sure those skills are transferable. We want to make sure that children are investigating spellings to make them meaningful for the children. We want to make sure that we're meeting those spellings in context and making them as concrete as possible to give the children a real thorough understanding. And we want to make sure that we have a thorough knowledge of the year group expectations that we are teaching. OK, I really hope that you found that useful and I do hope that that will help to make spelling stick in your classroom. OK, thanks very much. See you soon. Bye bye.